Martin County's Heritage Station. It's time now for the Casey Ingram Show on WSTU. The opinions expressed are those of the program host and guest and not necessarily those of WSTU. WSTU does not endorse products that may be mentioned. Any reproduction or retransmission of this broadcast is strictly prohibited without written consent of WSTU. It's time to call in with your questions and comments at 220-9788, 220-WSTU. And now, here's Casey Ingram. Welcome back to the second half of the show. We just uh, finished up with our last candidate of the season, and that was Dr. Karina Balderamos Robinson, and she is running for uh, Congress. Flor- uh, I want to I want to say Florida, but House of Representatives and CD twenty one. Again, folks, uh, reminding everybody, please get out there and vote. No matter who you vote for, it's important to let your voice be heard, and uh, your voice does need to be heard. And we can do that right now in early voting, or November eighth is the actual election day. I want to remind everybody that public service equals public trust, and this is a reminder to vote for Raymond Denzel. Ray Denzel will work for all the people of District eighty six. Ray Denzel is a problem solver and will always have an open door for you to reach him. Ray Denzel won't just vote the party line. Ray will vote for what makes sense for the people. Early voting begins October 26th or vote for Ray Denzel on November 8th. Political advertisement paid for and approved by Raymond Denzel, Democrat for Florida House of Representatives, District 86. Also want to remind everybody that Indian Town Marina is one of South Florida's best boat storage facilities. It's located inland on the Okeechobee Waterway. Very well protected hurricane hall. Hopefully we're over uh, the hurricanes for the season, but season does not officially end until the end of November, so uh, keep them in mind in case a, a storm does pop up out there. And uh, they are home to many in the cruising community who find their facility is ideally situated and user-friendly where you have a do-it-yourself or full-service boat yard. So any kind of work that you need done on your boat, it can be done out at Indian Town Marina. Give them a call at 772-631-3272, 631-3272. And finally, remember the best-kept secret in Martin County is the Fish House. Art Center. It's down in the pocket in Port Salerno. All kinds of fun things to do down there. It has a boardwalk that has local artists, an Airbnb, art gallery, boat charters, marina, craft and creamery, uh, which has beers, wine, and 24 flavors of ice cream, bike rentals, just something for the entire f- family. And of course, we have our snowbirds coming back. So if you have friends that are coming in town, you'll want to take them out to the Fish House Art Center. That's down in the pocket in Port Salerno, the fishhouseartcenter.com. Next, uh, we have here in the studio, I'm very glad to have Captain Deanne Jones. And you know, the Salvation Army, I love having this organization into the studio because you do so many great things. So how are you doing today, Deanne? It's good to be here, and thank you for having us. And it's a good day in the Salvation Army. We are getting re- ready for our probably our most busy season, oh. although we are busy year-round. So uh, <laughs> We're I'm gonna not talk sure about it's that. the busy season. <laughs> it's just a, a new busy it, it really is, and this really is getting to be a super busy. And, folks, we all see the Salvation Army. Uh, there's hardly a store you can go into this time of year, and you don't see the red kettle and somebody out there with a friendly smile uh, ringing that bell. So uh, what happens with these funds that are donated uh, through the red kettle? Right. Thank you. So um, every uh, every dollar, every penny, nickel, um, whatever comes into that red kettle is funneled back into our programs that we ha- have going on year-round which is keeping uh, women and children in our shelter, keeping people, families, seniors in their homes with rental assistance, utility assistance, keeping food on the table, um, and so on. So those monies that are collected are very important to help us keep our uh, services going year round. And we're going to talk about a lot of those services um, because it's actually surprising with the Salvation Army. But I also want to mention and have you point out with the donations, um, there's always articles that are out there about the percentage of donations that actually go to the organization as opposed to a lot of them go to salaries. And it's amazing on some of these organizations how many, Mm -hmm. what filters out the actual donation, how much filters out that helps is a small percentage. What What's the case with the Salvation Army? So for us, every 85 cents to the dollar goes back into our programs. Obviously, we do have um, administrative costs and that, but we try to make sure that the most, uh, the biggest percentage will go back to help the people of the community, and we think that's really important. Um, with, um, In fact, with disaster funds oh. um we you know we handle disasters as well you're over by ian as well right so. um actually my husband just got back a couple of weeks ago from serving 
um, with Hurricane Ian. With disaster funds, that is 100%. So every single dollar that people uh, contribute to the disaster funds, 100% of that goes back to helping the people that have been devastated by hurricanes or floods, fires, that sort of thing. Folks, there's a lot of organizations that help out, but the Salvation Army is always the one I go to, and actually always the one I donate to, because so much of our donations actually go to the people in need, and I appreciate that with your organization. So, yeah, for sure. Um, and you're actually a co-captain here, I, I saw online, right? Yes, so me and my <laughs> husband, we are co-leaders, and um, so we are very complimentary of each other, and so we break things up um, according to our... Um, not our likes, but our the way that we do things. So um, he always says that he helps raise the money and I help spend the money. <laughs> so I I am usually in charge of all of the social services, um, shelters, and things like that. And then he focuses more on business, uh, making sure that the budgets are in line. And uh, so we're um, I think we're a pretty well. Uh, working team and we've been say. doing this since 2009 we've been married since 2006 so um, I think we've we've kind of we really have hit our groove so we kind of know how to um, work together right. well and um, it's so far so good well, I can tell uh, just by the look on your face and the, the joy in your voice that the both of you really enjoy what you're doing, and it's kind of your calling for life, and you do sound like a well-oiled team that really, it's, it's better to have two than one right, to lead the right. ship. Right, um, right. You know, two is always better than one, and in fact, um, we have three children, and so we've all kind of... Um, we, we do a lot of things together. In fact, when we found out that we were moving to um, Stewart, which we had no idea what kind of gold mine and treasure this was. Yes. But when we found out we were coming here, um, our oldest, uh, Ben, he's almost 16, and he says, so what are we going to be doing there? And I said, oh, <laughs> it's a we thing, huh? And he's like, well, yeah, you always get us involved. So what are we going to be doing awesome. there? So um, it's not just uh, a husband and wife duo. It's really a family a family thing so we always make sure that they're involved and understand you know what we're doing and and why it's so important to help people in the communities that we live in so well welcome to the area and we Thank love you. having you here so I, I hope you. you stay here a while <laughs> for sure uh, this is again captain deanne jones with the salvation army and salvation army does so many wonderful things and in, in in the interim, you, of course, have your different fundraising events. The Red Kettle was one of them. This weekend, though, you have a Wings of Hope luncheon and silent auction. It's at the Hutchinson Shores Resort and Spa in Jensen Beach. Uh, are there still tickets available for that? Yes, yes. Just call our office, um, and you can get tickets. Um, also, this is a fundraiser that is solely to help um, Compassion House. And Compassion House is our shelter uh, where women and children come. And it's not just to... Um, to be free from homelessness, but it's to make sure that they don't experience homelessness again. So our Compassion House director, she has this um, tough love mentality, but they learn budgeting skills. Um, they they help, we give them an opportunity to save up money so that when they do leave our shelter that they can go and be self-sufficient. And if a crisis comes again, it's not gonna be debilitating to them or their children. So it's a, it's a wonderful shelter and a wonderful program within the shelter. And so Wings of Hope is um, an opportunity to raise funds for, um, for that. And such an important need and, and service that you offer there, especially right now, mm -hmm. uh, we're going through such a staggering inflation rates. And I know a lot of people are being impacted by that. So I imagine you're probably having uh, more people reaching out and asking for help. And with that, uh, it's not just the Compassion House that you can help folks with, right? The Salvation Army actually helps in a lot of different um, avenues. Mm -hmm. um, is there a bill paying assistance, for example? Yeah, so... We don't have a set group of people that we assist. It's a wide range of people from the elderly to vets to single parents to, um, you know, working people that are just struggling to get by because, like you said, inflation is huge and um, trying to uh, be able to afford rent these days, it's just, it's really staggering. It is. And so we provide rental assistance. We provide um, utility assistance to keep lights on, to keep your water going, um, and food. Food has been a huge need. Um, since we've been here, we just see there are just so many people 
you know, if they can't, if they can afford to pay their bills, but then what do you have left over? And then there are people just going, okay, if I skip my meal, maybe I can, you know, feed my children. Right. And so we, you know, providing food is, it's essential. It's, it's a basic need. And I, sometimes I don't like calling it a basic need because when you don't have those basic needs, right. it's, um, it's life-changing and it's life-threatening. So um, right. those basic needs are just so important. And that's what we try to provide is basic needs to people who who just need something. So important. And just if you go to your website, the services, you have an adult rehabilitation center, anti-human trafficking, correctional services, disaster relief, holiday assistance, pathway mm-hmm. of hope, social services. Salvation Army really covers pretty much anybody's need, um, you know, uh, outside of medical, right? Right. Um, but, you know, anti-human trafficking, that's a thats a new one, I think, that I haven't seen on the Salvation Army before, but it's certainly in the last few years has become a really um, huge issue. Yeah, for sure. And it's scary because we always, we want to think it's not in our neighborhood. It doesn't happen in our neighborhood. And it does. It happens everywhere. And interesting enough, human trafficking or the fight against it and that injustice has been happening ever since the Salvation Army started in 1865. Wow. And uh, we started in England, in London, England. And even then, um, we were fighting for the injustices of the people. And in fact, the Salvation Army was a huge um, help in trying to raise the um, age of consent in London, England back in 1865. And they raised, I think it was like 12, 13, and they got it raised to 16, which is still, you know, that's an issue. But so we've been, um, it's really, it's not just basic needs and disaster, but it's also fighting social injustices. So there's a, a wide range of um, of things that we're doing. And to boil it down, it's to help others. And the needs are long and wide and high and deep. And the Salvation Army has always wanted to make sure that we are doing our very best to help others. And that means doing lots of different things. And so um, I'm really proud to be a part of an organization that just does its best to help others. And that's that's what I've always wanted to right. do. So this is a great vehicle to um, to make that happen. And I'm sure there are so many stories over the years that um, – you know, you could tell and how much the organization does help people. Mm-hmm. And that's it's got to be the heartwarming thing about it for you and your husband and everybody that's involved with the Salvation Army. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about that. Uh, you, you have a store. There's stores around. Mm-hmm. What all can people do besides donate money? Of course, money can always be used. But what else can people do to help out? So our, th- our family stores, obviously, it's all donations. So everything that comes in the store is people. It's things that people have donated. Um, if you are wanting to revamp your living room and so you want to get rid of your furniture or you have clothes that no longer fit you or you you know they're going out of style for you um, you can donate it to the family store and we offer free pickups so if anyone's like well I can't you know how am I gonna move a piece of furniture to the store Um, we do have trucks that come and pick it up and the monies that we you know that we get from selling all of these items again it filters back into the programs in order to help people so when you're going in and you're like oh i you know i love to shop for vintage things or you know sometimes thrifting is really fun when you are purchasing something that money is actually helping a life a person a family um so it's not just you know oh i get to buy this interesting thing, I'm also helping people in my community. So um, I love that sort of concept where, you know, you're shopping yet you're shopping for good. And it's kind of fun. You'll see some stories come through about the Salvation Army. Somebody found, you know, a painting that's worth a lot of money that somebody, right. you know, didn't realize what it was. And, or there was some, there was a bust that was um, like from, I, I want to say, the uh, Roman times that somebody had a partial one that they found in a in a thrift store and yeah, they actually so returned it but yeah there's so yeah. many things that come through the door so it's fun to shop there as well before we got here um and this happened but they you know they kept telling us when we first got here that there was a donation of clothes and I believe it was like this you know 
um, fur jacket. And so, of course, they were checking the pockets. And in the pockets were $20,000. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and so it's just like, oh, I wonder, you know, who right. had this sort of pocket change. But there right. was, a, you know, a significant <laughs> amount of money in the pocket. And so you just kind of never know what you're going to get. It's right. interesting. And so, you know, we have people who are sorting through all of the things that come in. And, and you're right. Like, th- it could be a painting that, you know, you just think, oh, we'll probably sell it for five dollars. Right. And it's like if you actually got it appraised. Um, oh my gosh, that'd be crazy. <laughs> we just got um, um, a donation of uh, cards, like baseball cards. Okay. And so we're in the process of right now of like going through each card and just kind of going, oh my gosh, is this going to be you know, a crazy card that is going to be worth right. tons of money? But yeah, you just kind of never know what comes in the store. Um, that we can put out on the floor to be sold. But again, it just goes to giving back to the community. So anything that you don't want anymore, you know, someone's um, leftovers can be someone else's treasure. But then also it goes back to making sure that people can stay in their homes, that they do have food on the table. Um, So it's it's more than just shopping for, you know, an interesting find. It is. It's it's a... a all encompassing it helps whether you're donating whether you're purchasing from the Salvation Army all of it goes to help you that's the unique aspect of yeah. of the donations and having the the Salvation Army store do you have it online as well the products we don't that is you know probably something that we all need to start thinking about you know how can we uh, move it to online because then you know we can actually reach more people um, so that's not something that we've um, thought about yet but You never know. You never know. It is a good idea. So in in the holiday assistance uh, area of your services, of course, the red kettle we spoke about. And folks, um, it's it's always fun. I always keep extra quarters in my car. So every time I go buy a kettle, I give them to my daughter. So she's, you know, kind of getting into that habit. So it's it's a lot of fun for her to be able to support the Salvation Army. But you also have another program called the Angel Tree. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. So I love the Angel Tree. It um, is a program where we provide clothes and toys to children 12 and under. Um, It is a way to help parents, um, you know, Christmas time or the holidays. um, It's, you know, people can have their budgets, you know, put down to a T, but then to go above and beyond at Christmas times, it becomes a strain for our families. And uh, so we are um, helping these families make sure that these kids have Christmas, uh, that they have something to have to open up under the tree. And what I've always, how I've always described it, it's giving these children a sense of normalcy. Um, You know, parents are, everyone's struggling, not just parents, you know, people with children, but everyone's struggling but when kids go back after christmas you know after the holiday break and everyone's saying well i got a skateboard i got you know this new pair of shoes um they can also say you know i got a i got a basketball or i got a pogo stick that was um a a request from a kid a couple years ago Uh. was a pogo stick and that always stuck with me but it gives them a sense of normalcy even though their lives may not be um you know they may not have hordes of money and they not may not be able to have all of the luxuries but they can have something and they can talk with their friends when they get back at the holiday season i think that's so important for children because they're not they're not you know responsible for um you know their budget right, restraints right, and right. things like that so i just think that it's a great opportunity to give children um an opportunity to just to have a sense it of normalcy, and I think that's important. It's the magic of Christmas, and everybody should experience a little bit of that magic. And yeah. so that's that's what the angel tree is. Yeah. So we do need people to come, and uh, we have 1,700 children this uh, season that wow. we are providing Christmas assistance for, and so we just need people to adopt these angels. So um, to like be an angel for an angel, so to speak. So we need people to adopt um, angels. And um, so they receive these tags and it says the name of the child. It says um, the age. It says whether they're a boy or a girl. And then it lists their wishes. And so we're not expecting everyone to, you know, take off all of the things, but just providing something for these children. And uh, whether it be a pogo stick or a pair of shoes, something, um, it is a great way to to just spread the magic of the holidays. Where can people pick up their angel? So they can call our office or they can um, go online and they can adopt. Um, We have angels 
ready right now. Um, our distribution for the Christmas season is going to be the 19th, 20th, and the 21st. So people need to start getting their angels right now because we do need them back by, um, I believe it's the 17th. Um, no, it's the 12th of December. Okay. So we need to, you know, we need people to start shopping now so we, we can get it back into our office and start organizing for that distribution day where it's the best day of oh, the year where we be. can see parents just, um, not just be happy, but a sigh of relief that, you know, okay, right. I've got some assistance this and I got some relief. Something. So something it to is make a Christmas magical fun. time. It's so much fun. Uh, so uh, should people wrap the gifts? No. Okay. So what we, we don't want them to be wrapped. First of all, we want to see what's coming in and what's going back out to the parents. Also, we, you know, we give them the opportunity to have wrapping paper. We give that to them. Okay. It's really, we are helping parents be able to wrap it up and put it under the tree so they... They might you know, add the, something to the it kids that's a little fun. The kids right. don't know where it's coming right. from because right. there's magic. Right. But we just want the, the parents to still be in control of what's coming in. Um, so, we yeah, we ask that not to be wrapped. So it and really makes it pretty easy to adopt an angel. Just, just, yeah. just go out and purchase it and then bring it back into the Salvation Army and uh, you'll take care of the yep. rest we'll and have sure fun. We'll make sure it gets to that child. <laughs> yeah. So, again, we're speaking with Captain Deanne Jones. She's with the Salvation Army here in the Treasure Coast. Um, there, there are three different counties that you your area covers Okeechobee, St. Lucie, and Martin. Today we're in Stewart, so we're going to talk a little bit more about Martin, but there's a lot of um, areas of service, and I wanted to cover those. There's food pantry assistance, past due utility assistance, past due rent assistance, school supplies, the angel tree we just spoke about, mm -hmm. prescription assistance, clothing assistance, personal hygiene items, free bread and pastries every weekday. So mm -hmm. folks always have something to grab something to eat yep. uh, every weekday. Furniture, household items, crisis assistance, a soup kitchen on Fridays only, and homeless shelter for women and children only. I mean, that's a lot of services, and I don't know if people really realize how far-reaching the Salvation Army is and how important it is. And um, this year, Captain Jones, um, have you noticed uh, a lot more people that are in need of assistance? We talked about inflation at the beginning of the, the show. Yeah, um, the need is greater and just the wide range of people that are coming to see us. Um, I think it's humbling to them because it's a lot of first timers are going, I just, I don't even know what I'm supposed to be doing. And uh, we make sure that we handle it with, um, you know, care and that we keep their dignity intact because it is, um, people are finding themselves on hard times just because um, everything's going up, yes. rent and food and everything is going up yet our wages are staying the same. Right. So people are, just the need is greater and it is people, it, it's people with jobs that, um, teachers and right. first responders and people with jobs that you know, full-time jobs, and, and now people are having to not just have one full-time job, but two full-time right. jobs, and um, it's so hard. I, I think about, you know, single families, um, single-parent families, where even in our shelter, we have single-parent families, and they're working a full-time job, and then at nighttime, they're going and they're driving an Uber car, and, and just they're doing everything they can. They are, are, they are you know, um, giving up so much of their time obviously to provide for their families and so it's just a wide range of people that we're seeing um, because the need is so great and um, it's it's daunting to see but I know that we are doing the best we can to help the people that are in need so um, but yeah the the need is greater than definitely ever. Out there. What about determining eligibility for somebody that may need utility assistance or rent or prescription? How, how do you determine eligibility? So we have policies and procedures in place um, to make sure that we know that they are in need of our assistance. And um, I always like to share that we, we pay landlords directly. We pay the utilities companies um, directly so that once they come in, they fill out their paperwork and we know, okay, 
you know, you have a, a past due bill because they have to bring all, all of that paperwork in. And then we just go directly to these companies to make sure that it's being paid. Um, it's a way to protect everyone involved, us and the clients and, and yes. the companies so that, you know, we are diligent with the money that we are are putting out for these services and to make sure that, you know, these it, and to protect the clients as right. well to make sure okay we know that this it's money paid. went to where where it was supposed to go so um, there's lots of you know paperwork which is you know not so much fun but we are we're knowing that we're doing our due diligence to make sure that these services are being um, done to the you know to the best of our ability it sounds to me like you need a lot of volunteers to help make this all yes, happen it sounds do. like a lot of work volunteers <laughs> all the time we need volunteers for uh bell ringing we need volunteers all year round because there's so much that we're doing and we have a great team we have a team that is it's beyond the a team but there's only so many hands so the more volunteers that we have the better that we can um, do our services and make sure that more people are helped oh and certainly i, I it's a full-time job, I'm sure. So, mm -hmm. uh, folks, it's the Salvation Army. Again, we're speaking with Captain Dean Jones. And, you know, if, if you can help in any way, whether it's money, whether it's shopping at the Salvation Army store, donating goods, or offering your time, uh, all those things are of, of great need always. Uh, you also have some programs I thought were a little interesting. Uh, tell me a little bit. we got just a couple minutes. But mm -hmm. The music and arts. Yes. So um, the Salvation Army, we are a church. We, we have so, uh, social services, but we also have spiritual services. And um, from the beginning, I mean, if we go all the way back to the days in 1865, music was a really great way of um, drawing people in. But yeah. it, we also teach music. And if you've ever looked at research of teaching kids music, teaching adults music, it just increases um, their ability to be social, but also in in their education. It just gives them an even greater opportunity to um, learn math and English. I was going to say so, there's a strong relationship yes, between music and math. Yeah, music and uh, you know music and arts and education they go hand in hand. So it gives you know kids a greater opportunity to be successful in their education so it's just it's great so folks again this is the salvation army it's like there's so many things that you offer uh, it truly is an army and uh, I, I love the name it's really all-encompassing and it, it's not just food services or just utility bills it's a lot of different areas to yes. help out so folks if you can help out you see that red kettle bucket uh, this year always you know, help out if you can um, you'll you'll see people even my engineer here Evan will be out ringing a bell here in a couple weeks I believe uh, but salvation army go down and visit the thrift store visit you online adopt an angel that's going to be yes, a lot of it's a really fun one and also i want to remind folks uh we had commissioner chris collins uh in the studio last week the zip meeting the town workshop is going to be this evening starting at four o'clock and it's in the city of stewart hall that's the zoning in progress that the city of stewart is going through they want your input uh is the city of Stewart growing too quickly? Do we have too much growth or not enough? So they want to hear. Got just 10 seconds. Again, Captain mm -hmm. Deanne Jones, Salvation Army, thank you so much. Let's support that red cattle. Thank you so much. My pleasure. We'll see you next week. Listening.